How's it going everyone? Welcome to United States Rugby Solutions. Today we're going to talk about uh, why MLR needs to succeed when it comes to coaches and the coaching profession. So as many of you know, uh, John Mitchell will leave his post as head coach of the Eagles following the second World Cup qualifier. And there was an interview, uh, the press conference he had with the Bulls was sort of enlightening. Uh, and then, I gotta tell you, uh, the problem with the union is it's a carrot and stick, right? We only use the stick. And I have another question. Why did we only ask Mitchell to take to relocate and take a pay cut. I understand we had a budget shortfall, you know, but maybe because it's not like politically correct to ask Mike Friday to take a pay cut and to move to the United States because he's been so successful on tour the last like two and a half years. And we went to the Olympics. So we have all that support from the USOC. Not really. You only get that in the two years leading up to the World Cup. I mean, not the Rugby World Cup, but the uh, Olympics. So, 15s is rugby. 7s is a developmental tool for rugby. 7s doesn't make you money. Um, gold medals are nice, but... I mean, we're, we're planning on somehow breaking it even or operating at a loss for Rugby World Cup 7s. So think about that. 15s is what drives revenue, men's 15s especially, is what drives revenue in world rugby and rugby here. Okay. So, asking your coach to not only move full-time to the United States, but also take a pretty big pay cut, is probably going to create issues. Uh, when it comes to contract law, uh... Well, I mean, he's living up to the terms of his contract. You were trying to renegotiate. But, was Mitchell going to be committed the entire time? I don't know. I wanted him to be. He's a great coach. He turned the ship around. If you guys watched her performance in the World Cup with Mike Tolkien, and then all the drama that was created between his like inability to deal, like, professionally deal with his captains. Yeah, that's where we're going. We're going back to cheap. Because the previous coach to Mike Tolkien was Eddie O'Sullivan. He also made 250k. He also won a game in the Rugby World Cup. We lost to Japan, a team we routinely had beaten in the previous 20 years of international play. Think about that. So, yeah, I, I, I'm sort of sad that Mitchell wasn't committed to being here full time and to building the Eagles to a tier one nation on the field. That means being ranked in the top 10. All right. I thought that's why he came. I, can't, I thought he understood the project. But many would tell me that it was just a job for him to, you know, basically clear his name because there was a scandal with the, uh, the, the Kings and Super. He got a big buyout, too. Oh, my gosh. And uh, the South African Rugby Union president definitely tried to exercise some stuff so that he wouldn't get paid. So... So that's why he didn't get the Stormers job. That's why he took the USAR job. And guess what? He went 7-5-2. and two. Pretty good. Um, our, our November tests weren't what they wanted to, we wanted them to be, but they were pretty close. And we'll see where we're at this summer. We have a chance to go 4-0 or 3-1. and one. But it makes me wonder why you would announce this now rather than after qualifiers, if it was a set-in-stone deal. 
Um, but he got a lot from the blue, from the Bulls. You know, so it is what it is. Now let's get into MLR and why it must succeed for a coaching pathway. Well, one for the union, you don't want to be dependent on foreign coaches and. When you want elite coaches, they, well, um, if a tier one nation, if we're not tier one at the time, comes around and is looking for a successful coach and they've been building the Eagles and their contract's up, we won't get to renew. They will go to that tier one nation. It's that simple. Um, so developing the coaching profession in the United States. Well, what we'll see here is, since there is a professional version. So in most sports in the United States, it's either professionals version or Olympic version. So with rugby sevens, now there's an Olympic version. So you'll start to see schools play rugby sevens at the high school level. And then a lot more schools will play Rugby 7 at the collegiate level. And I can tell you, Rugby 7 probably has a chance to become an NCAA sport. Not Rugby 15s. You know. But if there becomes a professional level in the United States, I'm not saying Rugby should be go NCAA and men's. Because I think by not being NCAA, there's a lot of chances that we can take when it comes to funding that you don't have to deal with when it comes to Title IX. Um, but so we establish a professional coaching profession in the United States. That gives young men an incentive to when they're, not just when they're done playing rugby and not just when their children start playing rugby, but to get into coaching much sooner because, A, professional pathway. So that means as more and more colleges uh, form collegiate programs and start paying their coaching staffs well because they want to compete for titles in the national championship pathway. We'll eventually see high school jobs, like single school high school jobs, and state organ state athletic organizations will recognize that the, our sport across the across the country. Once that's done, and people will want to coach. They'll, just like they want to coach football. You know? Because how you cut your teeth in coaching is first by coaching youth. And then by coaching in high school. And then by coaching in college. And then by coaching in prof the professional then. Like, professional leagues. So, a lot of these guys, you know... There's plenty of guys that never coached high school that are coaching in the NFL. Plenty of guys that never coached high school coaching in college. But guess what? Most of those dudes, vast majority of guys coaching in high school, they started out as freshman coaches. The vast majority of guys coaching in college, they started out as, you know, high school coaches, high school head coaches. They've all, like, made the jump. Incremental. They've all paid their dues. You know, the vast majority of assistants in the NFL coached at some point in college. So, there has to be a professional ladder in order for young men to desire to become, young men and women, to desire to become coaches for rugby so that we can eventually have elite coaches in the United States. Having a professional pathway will not only revolutionize the training for the Eagles, but it will give the union the ability to hire an elite coach here in the United States. A person that lives here, a person that is an American. And that should go with once MLR, you know, get established and you know part of this new strategic vision is to develop an American style of coaching and play well the union needs to work with the 
the professional competition to develop that kind of player. So that's why MLR needs to succeed. So that we can not only develop players, but we can develop coaches. And the stuff I'm seeing out there right now about who could replace Mitchell, I don't want to see the union go cheap again. But the union definitely needs to make hard decisions and make sure that coach resides in the United States for, you know, nine out of 12 months so that he can lead the developmental program. He can lead the scouting. And, you know, it's probably not a domestic coach other than Jack Clark right now. And Jack Clark retired from coaching the Eagles. If he wants to come back, the union's probably going to have to kowtow. Because the union has treated college coaches poorly over the last 20 years. He is the winningest coach in the, for USA Rugby. So you got to think about that. He is the best option. I don't know if he wants the job. Um, for domestic coaches. Now... If you want an overseas coach, he's got to move. Period. I don't want to be beholden to some guy who wants to stay at home. So, if we want domestic coaches leading the Eagles, Major League Rugby needs to succeed. That will bring, eventually, the high school and collegiate programs in the sphere of influence of those Major League teams their quality of play and coaching will dramatically, dramatically increase for both the local college and high school and even club game. Everything will get better. And that, that competition will force everyone who's not near an MLR team to raise the money so that they can hire better coaches. To recruit younger players to get out there and be like, hey man, you played football. You're still in great shape. Do you want to play rugby? Because this, I mean, it's a great sport, brotherhood, all that stuff. MLR must succeed not only for the development of players, but for the development of coaches in the United States. 